Hi, welcome back. My name's James Cockle. I'm running for the Green Party co-leadership this year, and I'd like your support. Um, the AGM's in August, and we'll be leading up to that soon, so please do get in touch with your local party um, and, and make sure that your delegates know that you want them to support me for this co-leadership run. So I want to talk now about um, Aotearoa and, and two possible futures. Um, we have become so afraid of losing that we've forgotten to ask ourselves what would things be like if we won. We've introduced so many um, policy proposals that are, are so watered down and so inoffensive to anyone, uh, and we've been so worried about not upsetting anyone, that if we actually won, we'd be in a massive transition to renewables. We'd have high EV use because we would have transformed all of our um, transportation from the automobile, the, the con combustion engine, to the EV. We would um, have we'd have some small degree of mode shift in, in transportation. We'd have um, f huge financial restrictions, so there'd be limited progress on uh, poverty, housing, and inequality because of the financial restrictions that we're having to um, having to live under in order to uphold the status quo um, economic system. And there would be very slow change, high consumption, high risk, and low resilience. You know, a, a day in the life would be you'd head down to get, to get to work and the traffic would be crazy, just like it is now. Everyone would be in their cars miserable, just like they are now. It's not that we've got the wrong policy, it's the the quantity of our policy that's that's um, left wanting. So what I'd like to, you to consider is what a more ambitious goal might look like. And what, what kind of what kind of goals should we have so that we consider that we what would it be like if we actually won? You know, rather than just putting out these sort of watered down milk toast policies that are not offensive to anyone, but if we actually won, wouldn't be enough to save planet and to to look after the people. So here's what I believe we need, and that's a conservationist approach, a conservationist approach to everything we do. That means we reduce consumption across the board. We reduce energy use massively, 80% drop in energy use, because the EROI, the investment return on the um, energy return on investment for renewables is nowhere near as high as the return energy return on investment for fossil fuels. So we need to understand that in theory, we can just change fossil fuels to renewable, but in reality, there is no replacement. There is no replacement for the fossil fuels that we're using to, to maintain the same level of consumption. Now, I'm not saying we, we shouldn't be transferring. I'm not saying we shouldn't be converting to renewables. Of course we should. But that has to be coupled with a massive downshift in energy consumption. That means our transportation network becomes electrified, do, does convert to EVs, but a massive mode shift away from um, personal car ownership. I know it's a tough conversation to have, but it's one that absolutely has to happen. Energy efficiency in our households, much, much higher regulation for energy efficiency and much, much lower energy consumption and electricity consumption. And of course, in industrial energy, especially heat, massive downshift in the amount of energy that's used. So we need to find other ways of doing that. Everything we do must be regenerative. It's no longer acceptable that we aim to be sustainable because if we achieve sustainability, what have we achieved? What are we sustaining? A hugely degraded natural environment where the air, water, land, sea, and fresh water are massively degraded and the biodiversity has been crushed. Many, many species have gone extinct. Many are on the brink of extinction. We cannot afford to sustain the level that we're at now. We must become redress. Those are the changes that we really need to make and those are the things we need to be ambitious about. What it will mean in people's lives is a more resilient lifestyle, more resilient food um, security, more resilient transport options, um, a better quality of life. Um, but it means that then everybody's needs will be met enough that everybody can fully participate in society. These are the, these are the massive big changes, the big picture changes that we need to be um, pushing for. And we need to keep that in the back of our, of our minds. What happens if we win? Not just, not just let's minimize the, the loss, what happens if we win? Yeah. And of course, finally, we, we must also shift power and reform our institutions um, to, to make things 
more equal and in some cases rethink some of our institutions altogether. Thanks for listening. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again on the next episode.